Hi, hello, welcome. My name is Linda. Welcome back to another live session by ITTT International TEFL and TESOL training. And today we're going to talk about teaching contracts and what to watch out for before you sign. Very important stuff. So a um, lot to cover today. Um, also, there will be a lot of time for you guys to ask questions. Um, leave comments, um, feel free to do so at any time. There will also be a Q&A section at the end after all of this where you can ask any kind of question related to TEFL, TESOL, teaching, whatever is on your mind. Um, and there will also be a 30% off discount code today that you can use. Um, to get 30% off any TEFL or TESOL course from ITTT. So that's very exciting. Um, and also, please don't forget to like and subscribe. You're already here. Uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, we are actually live on both um, places. So give us a like, subscribe, follow. We share a lot of interesting content on a daily basis. Um, especially on our Facebook page where we share teaching material that you can use in your classroom, also teaching job offers around the world, and um, yeah, a lot of TEFL, TESOL information, whatever um, interests you, you'll find on this page, I'm sure. Um, and also, I see that there are already some people watching, so please do let me know where are you watching from right now? Where are you at? Um, I'm in South Korea. It is 10.30 a.m. on Friday. So very excited about this. Very excited about the weekend. The weather is finally nice and warm. And it is spring. Cherry blossom season everywhere in Korea. So I'm very excited about that. But what about you guys? So where are you watching from? What time is it right now? And how are you doing today? I hope you're having a wonderful day. <laughs> Let me know before we get into today's topic. <laughs> Do let me know where you are right now. Just put it in the comments so that I can see, also that I can see that you can see me and hear me clearly that everything's working well. Oh, Joao, how are you doing? Good evening from Recife or Recife. I don't, I forget how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry. Recife, Recife. Anyway, I know it's an ama amazing place. Very beautiful. So uh, welcome. So it's evening time for you. So I guess Thursday evening. Thank you so much for taking some time to spend it with me tonight. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. What about you guys? Everybody else watching? Where are you at? Where are you watching from? What time is it? How are you doing tonight, today, this morning, whatever time it is where you are? Um, I hope you're doing great. And thank you so much for joining today's live session about teaching contracts and what to watch out for before you sign. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff coming today. I'm going to talk about 10 um, important things, things to watch out for, um, for TEFL contracts. And then I'm also going to give you some bonus tips and also a checklist at the end, um, with all the important things on one slide so that you can, um, maybe screenshot this so you, you can always refer back to it. That's kind of the goal for today. And I want to start off by um, just introducing myself real quick for people who are watching for the first time. So my name is Linda. I'm a travel writer and content creator under the name Linda Goes East because I have a huge passion for Asia. I'm originally from Germany and the U.S. I was actually born and raised in Germany. My mom is German. My dad is American, but I spent some time in the States as well. But then I moved east, so I spent some time in China teaching English there and also working in online marketing. And then since 2015, I have been permanently living in South Korea, where I also have been teaching English, German, and also worked in um, marketing. So that's where ITTT sort of comes in. 
Um, and I am a marketing professional at ITTT. That stands for International Teflon TESOL Training. I know many of you know this already because you are certified. Um, but I know we also get a lot of people watching every week who are new to this. So I just want to introduce real quick. Um, yeah, ITTT is a leading Teflon TESOL <clears throat> course provider worldwide. Excuse me worldwide um and we offer a, a wide variety of different courses for all different needs and preferences and essentially goals wherever um you want to go whatever you want to do in terms of teaching english abroad there will be a course for you um good i see juliana here hi juliana watching from illinois 8 30 p.m on thursday today we have a cold day again it is 39 degrees now Ooh. It is really cold. Did you have a lot of snow as well? Is there still snow there? Or did it all melt away? I had no idea Illinois was so cold, actually. That's crazy. <laughs> is it usually like this? Or is it just a very cold spring? Or is this normal? It is morning in Korea, so I need my morning coffee. Don't mind me over here. <laughs> we are going into today's topic. First, um, again, a reminder that we do have this 30% off opportunity. So what you can do, you can either scan this QR code here with your phone and it will lead you to the application page and you can pick your course and get 30% off or if that does not work for you, scanning the code, that is no problem. You can also use the link that you see in the comment section right now, which looks like this. It ends in Facebook Live minus Linda. This code will also get you 30% off today. So if you're interested in TEFL, in TESOL, um, yeah, use this code to kick start your career, basically. Now is a great time to get started. Many countries around the world are opening up again. Um, many of them haven't even been close to teachers. So TEFL was not really on hold, only in a couple of countries. But now they're also opening up again. So now is a great time to get started and to move abroad and teach again. All right, so Juliana says, this is normal for me. Okay, normal Illinois weather. That's crazy. Okay, I see. I really appreciate the spring weather here and especially all the cherry blossoms. So um, yeah, I can't imagine being it, that being that cold right now in Illinois and having snow, snowstorms and stuff. Yeah, but that's how the world works. So this is it. I'm going to make myself bigger. 30% off. I'm going to mention this again at the end uh, for anybody who's joining, you know, and didn't hear it. Um, just want to give everybody the opportunity to um, take advantage of this offer. If you have any questions, obviously, feel free to leave a comment. You can also always reach out to me at Linda Goes East um, on Instagram. I'm always over there. And also for any um, course related questions, ITTT questions, you can reach out to us via email courses at tsol-tefl.com and my team will get back to you with all of your questions. All right. So today's topic, teaching contracts and what to watch out for before you sign. Yeah. Um, Obviously, when you want to teach English abroad and um, you start a new position, you will sign a teaching contract, right? If the school, um, if you have an interview and the school offers you a job, but they do not give you a contract, that's a red flag right there, right? So with any job back home, the same, any kind of job you start, you will have a employment contract. And that's the same for teaching English abroad. It's just another employment and you will have a teaching contract, but obviously because you are likely going to teach in a different country, this contract will maybe look a little bit differently. And you also need to watch out for a couple of different things than you would normally would have to watch out for in your own country. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm going to talk about 10 things that you need to watch out for. I'm also gonna give you some bonus tips. And like I said, a checklist at the end 
detailing again all the different steps and things you need to look out for that you can then screenshot and refer back to for when you are applying. We have Amitava. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. You're looking nice. Thank you so much. I'm watching you live from Kolkata, India. It is Friday morning, 7 a.m. Where are you from? South Korea. <clears throat> yeah, I live in um, a city sort of in the middle of Korea, South Korea, um, not Seoul. So it's about an hour and 20 minutes from Seoul, really like in the center of the country. So it's really easy to get around and visit all the other amazing places around Korea. So that's really exciting. And I've been here since 2015. <laughs> How is the weather in Kolkata? That sounds great. And it's 7 a.m. Okay. Interesting. We have Min Min. Hi from Myanmar. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining this live stream today. I appreciate it. How are you? <coughs> oh, we have Leturk. Good morning. Greetings from the Philippines. Nice topic for today's live session. Yeah, I was hoping, um, you know, that today's live session, obviously every, every week I want to provide value and offer you with something to take away and learn something new. Um, and I think this is a very, very, very important topic, especially now that more and more people are going abroad again um, and more and more teachers are getting hired again. Many teaching programs are picking back up and are hiring teachers. So you need to know what to look out for before you sign a contract. That is what we're going to talk about today. Awesome. Then without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the first thing that you need to watch out for. So let's have a look what that is. Oh, and I'm going to make myself, and now it's fine, but in just a minute, I'm going to make myself smaller again so that you can see the examples that I'm showing you. So the first thing that you should look out for is, is the contract written in English and easy to understand? So if you are going abroad to a different country to teach English, obviously, maybe, most likely, their official language is not English. So if you receive a contract, that is entirely only in their language and there's no English or a, another language that you understand on it, then that should raise a red flag and you should not sign this contract because you need to understand what you are signing, right? So let me show you an example of what it normally looks like. Um, yeah, so this is a example page from a contract for a teaching position in China. Um, and as you can see, there is a Chinese part and then there's also a translated part in English. So this is what it normally looks like. Um, and what you should also look out for is do the translations of both languages make sense. Now, obviously, you probably might not be fluent in this other language, like Chinese or wherever you're going. Um, so it would be a good thing to either, um, if you have a recruiter, obviously have your recruiter have a look over it. Or if you have a friend already in this country who can look over it. Or you could also... Um, refer to a Facebook group, for example. Um, there's a lot of Facebook groups like English teachers in Korea, English teachers in China, and so on. And you could hop on there and maybe ask somebody, share this contract, maybe black out all the personal information and the school name, um, but maybe post this or contact somebody or ask around if somebody would um, have a look at your contract so that they can um, make sure that both translations make sense and are the same. But this is really the first thing that you need to look out for. Hey, is this contract written in a language that I also understand? So typically it will look like this, uh, half English and half in the other language. And then the next step from there would be to make sure that both translations, both parts um, are identical and make sense. All right, uh, let me look at this comment. So Amitava says, it is hot and warm in the morning while slightly pleasant with cool winds in the evening, night and early morning in Kolkata. Do you live in Busan? <laughs> Great. No, I do not live in Busan. So Busan is all the way in the south, actually. 
um, at the coast. I live in a city called Chongju, which is near the next bigger city, Daejeon. Um, even though Chongju is also the capital city of the province that I live in, which is Chungbuk, Chungbuk province. So that's where I live. Okay, so this is the first thing. Remember that, um, obviously, kind of a no-brainer, right? Never sign a contract that you don't understand if it's in a foreign language. Um, but sometimes, you know, we get overwhelmed. We really want to take this teaching job and you just trust your employer. Oh, yeah, it's I'm sure it's fine. And you just sign it. Um, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, you don't know the school, you don't know the employer, and um, you know, you're signing a contract. So um, really take your time and look over it and make sure, you know, it um, it's up to par, basically. Good. So this is the first thing. Then we have number two, is the name of the school the same as the one you were told during interviews? And has it been spelled correctly? Um, yeah, so why should you care about that? Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had, um, the topic was uh, teaching scams. So some people or some scammers, Tefl, TESOL scammers, um, teaching job scammers, they will actually use the name of a very well-known school and then try to scam you out of money for things like visa fees or flight ticket things. Um, so sometimes they will just use a name of a school. And so um, usually what will happen in the process, right? You look for a job offer, you contact them, you send them your application, then you are invited to an interview. Usually it's a Skype interview, video interview. Um, and then if all parties agree, they will send you the contract, right? So this is sort of like the third step. Um, so during the interview or already in the job offer, you will know the school's name, right? And then in the interview as well, in your email communication, they probably have like a logo somewhere. So then when you get the contract, you want to see, you want to check and make sure that the name that they told you the name of the school was, is the same on the contract as well. So let me show you an example here. Typically, um, this is another example of a, of a teacher contract. You have the logo at the top. So make sure is it the same name and also location. If it's a very big chain, um, they will have schools like all over the country, for example, or all over the city. So is it the same campus that you, you know, thought you were applying to? Or are they suddenly switching? Um, you know, some people do that too. Some schools, they are like, oh, you know what? Actually, you applied for uh, the school in in Seoul, but um, okay, and then they give you a contract for a school in Busan and try to place you there because maybe they just need someone now in Busan. Um, and they try to just um, kind of sneakily do that without telling you because a lot of people, they just want to go to Seoul because Seoul is the capital and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's Seoul. Um, so that's one thing. Um, so just, you know, make sure the logo is the same, the name is the same, the location of the campus is the same, and also the logo, does the logo match? Is it the same logo or is it suddenly a different logo? That would raise a red flag. Um, then also here where it says here too, in the text where it says and, so your name um, and address and ABC College. So is that the same name also in the first paragraph of the school? And then also the school's address. So does the address match? Like the city, is it the same in the same like area of the city where you initially applied to? Because sometimes, like I said, they maybe try to sneakily put you in a different school that you actually originally applied for without telling you. Um, and you actually think, oh, I'm going there, but then you arrive and then it's like, oh no, actually you're gonna work at this campus. So we kind of wanna avoid these situations. Sometimes that can happen. So again, a little bit of a no brainer, but like I said, when we get this teacher contract and we're so excited, we just want to hop on the plane and go abroad and teach. We might not think about these no brainer, super easy things to look out for, but just, you know, take note, 
And in most cases, it is fine, but you never know. And, you know, just um, check. And if you spot a difference, obviously, you let them know. You're like, hey, why is, you know, the name or the address different than what we in initially said? And then um, they will clear things up, hopefully. And um, you can avoid maybe being placed in a place where you don't want to be. And um, avoiding red flags here. So that's the second thing. The name and the address. Do they match the logo? All of these important things. Second thing. Now we're moving on to the third thing. Which is. Is your name and passport number on the contract? And are they correct? So that's also very important. That your name, obviously full name. Um, some of us have a middle name. Some countries don't do middle names, especially in Asia. So you need to make sure that your full name is on it and also your nationality most often and passport number. This is very important for visa purposes because you need your teaching contract in many, many cases to then take this contract to the local embassy to, your rece to receive your uh, teaching visa or work visa for that country. So this information needs to be 100% correct on the contract or you're going to have problems in receiving your visa. So let's look at an example. Again, this is for a job, for example, in Korea. And as you can see, there are clearly uh, sections where it says a citizen of and you need to input the correct country. Passport number, there's a section for this. So put this in here. Again, citizenship, because especially for Korea, this is very important information for English teachers because only people from seven recognized English-speaking countries at the moment can receive this teaching visa in Korea. And that's why um, that is very important. So sometimes maybe an employer, if you're not from one of those countries, he might the employer really wants to hire you and might put the citizenship in here um, that's not actually your citizenship and a wrong passport number and try to maybe fool the authorities in giving you that visa. Um, mostly not because um, that doesn't really work at all anyway. But just make sure that this information, your personal information is correct because otherwise the process just might take longer. Um, you have to get another contract with the right information. It just delays things. So you just want to avoid these things as early on as possible. If that makes any sense. <laughs> Do let me know at any time if there's something, something not clear. Or if you have any additional questions, just leave a comment. That's totally fine. And I'll help you to clear things up. Or if you had an experience signing a contract before and you want to add something, um, a comment, feel free to do so. We're all here to learn something, um, you know, something new um, and share our experience. That's how we can learn and how we can um, make better choices, so to speak. So, yeah. Good. So I think this was the third thing, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, really basic stuff until here, right? Um, but like I said, sometimes we just get overwhelmed and we do not pay attention to these details because we're so excited. We just want to go and teach abroad. But really sit down, take your time looking through the contract and um, just making sure everything is in order. It's very important. Um, do it. <laughs> All right, number four, now uh, it's getting a little bit more interesting. Is the salary the same as that promised to you in interviews or and is it written down correctly? Um, very important stuff, right? Money, you may have spoken about the salary in your interview or it was already mentioned um, in the job offer initially. So you just want to make sure in the contract that it's the same number. Not lower. If it's higher, obviously, that would be great. But um, <laughs> if it's lower, then we have a problem here, right? So make sure that the salary is the same in the contract. And there's also some additional things. So let's have a look. Um, yeah, so here. This, again, is for Korea. So that's why it says 2.1 million won. So that's the currency here. So, yeah, when you work in Korea, you're actually receiving millions um, as a salary. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it clearly says a monthly basic salary of 2.1 million won, 
will be paid either for 120 teaching hours per month, etc., etc. So there's a lot of details when it comes to the salary. That's one thing. And then also what you need to check is an overtime rate stated. So as you can see, your working hours, and we're actually going to talk about this in a minute, your working hours are also mentioned. So what if you, what happens when you exceed this? Should you have to work additional hours? Is there an overtime compensation stated? And it is. So it should be stated like here, the overtime compensation per hour, 60 minutes is 26,001. So that's also very important to make sure that something like this is in there because sometimes things happen. This actually happened at my school that I worked in. Sometimes we had to come in, we had to stay longer, we had to come in earlier, we had to come in on the weekend sometimes to clean our classrooms for like teachers, open open house or something. The parents would come in on Monday, so we had to come in and clean. Um, so then you would actually get overtime compensation. So it's very important that this is in the contract because, um, you don't want to work for free for anybody. So salary stuff, very important. Clearly check also working hours, even though I'm going to mention that I maybe right after this. But um, yeah, just make sure. And then also all these bonuses. We're also going to talk about this. Um, so I'm not going to touch on that. But um, just the base salary obviously needs to be stated um, along with the working hours, overtime rate. Um, yeah, and just make sure that this figure, the basic salary, is the same as what you um, talked with your future employer previously. Oh, Latark says, who pays taxes? So, yeah, this depends on, you know, the country that you work in. Um, for example, many countries in the Middle East are actually tax-free, so you don't pay any taxes on the salary. Um, here in Korea, you do pay taxes and I'm sure it's 50, 50, you and the employer 50, 50, many countries do it like this. So it depends on the country who pays the taxes, not always the same. Good. Next number five are the start and end date written down correctly. Um, teaching contracts are not indefinite they, they don't um they have like an end date usually it's one year or sometimes also two years or a little bit longer but um they will have an end date so this needs to be written down correctly um for visa purposes and also sometimes in the case of korea you do get a um pension you do pay into the national pension scheme and then when you leave when your contract is over and you leave korea you get that money back so that's why start and end date, they need to be written in the contract and they need to be correct, obviously, so you get those benefits. So how does that look like? For example, here, clearly period of employment, there would be a section, period of employment upon mutual agreement may be extended to two years. So this information is also there. If you want, you can extend it to two years, but the period of employment, Employment is March 1st to February 28th, the following year. So this really needs to be stated here. And then again, there's another um, section down here. Again, the employment will continue to February 28th unless terminated sooner as provided herein, etc., etc. Subject to following conditions. We're also going to talk about termination in a bit. Um, but yeah, this is very important. So if there is no date in your contract you really need to make sure that it's in there that's very important um because there's no date um yeah i mean you don't have really you can't really do anything about that if there's no date written in it it doesn't really hold any ground this contract so date needs to be clearly stated and then you also need to make sure count that it's really this that it's really a full year um you know, I mean, it is here in this case, but um, just make sure that is really a year or two. If you previously agreed on you're going to have a two-year contract, make sure that it is a two-year contract and not a one-year contract, um, etc. Also, vice versa, if you only want a one-year contract and then they're giving you a two-year contract, but you only want to be there a year, you need to make sure you don't sign that or, you know, have another discussion about it. 
So, yeah. Good. <laughs> the sixth uh, point here is everything with regards to your package written down and the same as previously agreed upon. So package in this case means your benefit package, right? Many countries, along with your monthly salary, you'll also get certain benefits like housing, free housing or a housing sti stipend. Um, you'll get like free airplane tickets, round trip or one way or whatever you agree upon. Um, so is that in the contract? It needs to be in the contract. Um, it doesn't, yeah. If it's not in the contract, it doesn't exist. It didn't happen. So it needs to be in the contract. Whatever you talked about during your interview or whatever was stated in the job offer previously needs to be in the contract as well and match obviously, what you are expecting. So let's have a look here. Mm. So this varies from contract to contract, whatever sort of additional benefits and bonuses you receive, right? So for example, there's a section here on housing where it says um, the employer shall provide the employee with a single housing chosen by the employer. So you will get housing sometimes. Yeah, here. Oh, no, not here. But sometimes you also get a, um, instead of housing, if you don't want that, if you want to look for your own apartment, there would be a housing stipend. So then this monthly amount should also be stated in the contract. A monthly stipend of 300,000 won, $300, et cetera. Um, here, other benefits named. So the employee shall be entitled to a one-time settlement allowance of 300,000 Korean won when he or she first begins the contract. Um, then the employer shall provide 50% of the employee's medical insurance. So that also needs to be stated in here. And I think there's also a section on the pension scheme in Korea. Again, this is a, an example of Korea. Um but again, this will vary from country to country and whatever contract you are negotiating. So in this section, when it comes to benefits, housing, here you have a little bit more room, sort of like you can negotiate a little bit during your interview stage of what you are expecting and what they can offer you, right? So this will vary. This might even vary from employee or teacher to teacher in the same school. Not all teachers actually have the same contract sometimes. Some teachers have a higher salary, a lower salary. They get more benefits, less benefits. So it all depends on also your, um, your um, strategy, right? Your interview strategy and how well you can negotiate, basically. Hey, Thurin. Very good advice you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying my best. <laughs> There's more to check. Um, yeah, so paid leave. This is another important section. Um, paid leave, how many vacation days do you have a year? Very important. This is a benefit of, of your contract. Um, also, sick leave should be in the contract. Um, and things like paid leave and sick leave, they also vary from country to country because labor law is different in um, different countries, right? So... One country might have more paid leave than the other. It really depends on where you're working. And also sick leave and um, also medical insurance and all these other benefits. So it really depends. But yeah, like I said here on the side, check this very carefully, right? So that you know what you are entitled to, what you are getting. Then whenever you are in the situation where maybe you are sick, you need to take a sick day. And they're like, oh, actually, no, we're, we're going to have to take some money out of your paycheck for that. Then you're like, um, actually, no, because my contract says this. So um, just kind of know your contract very well, um, not only before you sign it, but then also after when you're working so that you're just know your rights, what you're entitled to. Right. But also your responsibilities, obviously. So, um, yeah, it's like it goes both ways. Um but there's just many employers. Um, I just know from experience in China and in Korea, many schools who kind of try to loophole their way around and kind of take advantage of um, their foreign teachers. Um, 
well, unknowingness of local laws. And um, they're not very familiar with, you know, what they're entitled to because it's a foreign country. So you trust your employer. If your employer tells you, oh, yeah, you don't have any sick leave. We have to take something out of your paycheck. You're like, oh, yeah, that sucks. But I guess that's correct um, if you say so. Um, but no, check your contract. <laughs> and even if something is in the contract and you're like, huh, that kind of sounds wrong, refer to... Um, there's like in Korea, they have this helpline for legal things. So foreign teachers, not foreign teachers, any foreigners, they can call and actually get free legal advice. So you can actually ask them, hey, my employer did this. Is this okay? Is this legal? Can he do that? Can they do that? Because um, you never know. So anyway, I digress. It's not all schools are bad or doing that, but many do and try, you know, it's a business. So they try to... Um, obviously make you teach as much as possible and try avoid sick days and vacations and things um, that you're actually entitled to. So um, yeah, you just need to know these things. All right, before we move on to the next point, I have a comment here from Amitava. I just want to read out real quick. Since I'm coming from a non-native English speaking country like India and not from any of the seven native English speaking countries, am I not eligible to apply for any public or private schools in South Korea? Please elucidate further in this regard. Yeah, so actually, um, there is an additional clause for people from India. So actually, you're in luck. Uh, this only applies to people from India. So if you have, if you re meet all the other requirements that um, the teachers from these seven countries um, have, if you meet the requirements, plus you have a Indian teaching license, so a teaching license from India, then you also qualify for a E2 visa in South Korea. So that's the only way um, people from not these seven countries can also teach in Korea when you're from India and you have an Indian local teaching license. So you can look into that. Um, but right now, this is the only way. Um, there was a case, and I'm not up to date on this, um, but there were some people going to court to change this law or this visa requirement for the seven countries in Korea. Because at the moment, only people from... Canada, America, UK, Ireland, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand are able to obtain this E2 teaching visa for South Korea. <clears throat> and there was a case from where a school really wanted to hire this amazing teacher, but he happened to be from Nigeria. So not from one of the seven countries. So they actually took this thing to court and they started doing petitions. And this is still ongoing right now to change that so that um, it's no longer a requirement to be from one of those seven countries. Um, and schools will, would be able to hire anyone as an English teacher. So that's what they're trying to change at the moment. Um, so I'll update you how that goes. But since you are from India, there is this one way to actually get to Korea with an Indian teaching license. <laughs> Hope that helps. Okay, so I think this was the fifth or sixth point. I forget. Um, yeah. Oh, six. So seven. Next point you need to check. Are your work hours stipulated correctly? So usually in the job offer already, there will be um, teaching hours. So how many hours a week you have to teach, how many classes, how many teaching, teaching time, etc. It would be clearly stated there. And so you want to make sure that in the contract, in the actual contract, it is the same and they don't give you more hours, for example. Let's have a look at an example here. So there should clearly be a section about work hours. And it says um, not only how many hours per day. So here in this case, eight hours per day for five calendar days per week from Monday to Friday and shall not work on Saturdays, Sundays, Labor Day, May 1st, and na any national holidays of the Republic of Korea. So again, this is an example from Korea, but um, we'll be 
similar in other countries. So yeah, not only how many hours a day you need to work, but also which days of the week. In some schools, especially private schools, um, you're also going to find that you have to work on the weekends. So I used to work in a school in China that worked, um, yeah, I was working um, Saturday, Sunday, but I was off Monday and Tuesday um, because weekends are busy days for private schools because kids um, don't go to school those days, so they go to the private schools. Um, so that just depends. So maybe... You'll need to work five days, but it, it's um, Wednesday to Sunday. Depends. Um, every school's different. Or my, maybe you have two other off days in the middle of the week. Whatever. Every contract is different. Just make sure that the work hours and the days are correct um, as you expect them. And then also there's a section here about um, employees' class instruction hours per week shall not exceed 22 hours. And then if they do exceed 22 hours due to supplementary, supplementary class instruction, the employee shall be entitled to supplementary class instruction pay of 20,000 won per hour. That's like $20 per hour. So this is also important that this is in the contract. What happens your your um, class time? Um, the actual teaching hours. So as a teacher, you have teaching hours and then you also have prep time, right? You also do that at your job. You're not doing that at home. So um, yeah, that's very important. And then what happens when you have more than your um, maximum teaching hours a week, you get extra pay. So that's important. And then again here, mention of overtime pay. There should be a section on that too. We talked about that previously, but make sure that is in there as well. Good. <laughs> then, oh, another example. Oh, yeah, this is another example that's a little bit more in detail, what you might also see in a contract. So here you actually have a clear, even with the time of the day when you will teach. So this is probably a public school where every day is the same. Um, so here it says you're from 10 a.m. to 7. Oh, maybe it's a private school. 10 a.m. to 7.40 p.m., free lunch provided, Monday to Friday. Um, and from 1.30 to 3 p.m., a break. Okay, so break time from 1.30 to 3 p.m. Also important that that's in there. Only classroom teaching in excess of 120 hours per month approved is to be considered as overtime. Again, mention of overtime. All right. So sometimes they will also throw in the actual times. Uh, they should actually have this. Here they don't. Um, not sure why. So your actual working hours, the time that you need to be there also should be stated like this. 10 a.m. to 7.40 p.m. And free lunch provided. And break time. When is the break time? Okay. Nice. <laughs> Then we have number eight, nine, and 10. So this is all about sort of termination um, and how to extend your contract. So we have how to terminate the contract early and the penalties for doing so, the offenses, which may lead to your dismissal and contract termination, and how to extend the contract and any benefits for doing so. So this also needs to be stated in the contract. For example, here, things about resignation, the contract. Obviously, normally it would go until the date. That's the end date that we mentioned earlier. Until then. However, if something happens and you want to resign early, there will be a um, time you need to give written notice of termination. That should be stated. And then any... Um, yeah, any... Uh, yeah, if you don't do that, so this is for Korea, the penalties for doing so. So if you don't do, if you don't give 60 days notice, you'll be reported to the immigration service and you might um, get, um, your visa might get canceled. So it's important to know, right? If you're like, oh, I don't like the school, but you don't give 60 days notice and you just quit, you don't show up, you get reported to immigration, and your visa might get canceled. So it's important to know your responsibilities as well. Or it might um, lead to problems if you, you know, qu uh, quit earlier, resign earlier. This is on renewal. So this also should be in there. 
if you want to renew, if both parties agree, um, you can uh, renew for another year. And then what do you get for renewal? There's usually renewal bonuses. So they also need to be stated in the contract. So this is what you would get. Um, yeah, and all the things that have to do with renewal. And then also the things here in um, when the term in the, the contract can be terminated, uh, when it's legal for the employer to terminate the contract, when you violate any laws of the country, um, you don't obviously do your job here, you fail to perform your duties as mentioned in the contract, all of these things. If you don't actually hold the right visa, all of these things can lead to termination. So you also need to know these things, right? So that's very important. Um, so you don't do make any mistakes and get kicked out for some reason or something. <laughs> Just what I want you to take from this, take away from this is understanding your contract is very important. You need to know your responsibilities, but also your rights and what you, what you are entitled to, right? That's very important. And this basically in concludes this um, presentation now or this live. Um, but I have some bonus tips for you. And that is, so when you receive your contract, you read through it. Obviously, there might be some parts that you don't really understand. But even after going through the contract with um, the checklist that I'm actually going to give you soon, get someone you trust to read through it before you sign it. So this could be a friend. This could be a parent anyone just have somebody read through it maybe sometimes you overlook something or you know four eyes are better than just two so have somebody look over it and also good to know in most cases this is over here you will actually sign two contracts so one you will sign in many cases before you leave your home country they will send you the contract signed the school signed it already then you sign it and then you take this contract to the embassy to get your visa and then you will usually also sign one more when you arrive at the school sort of like their copy because i think the the first copy the immigration office or depends on like the embassy they actually keep that they don't give it back to you in many cases um, so then when you arrive, you actually sign another contract. So make sure that these two contracts are identical, that you sign the same two con contracts and then that no facts have been changed. Also very important. So those are the two bonus tips I have for you. And then let's have a look real quick at the, um, the checklist here. So again, this is everything we talked about. Feel free to screenshot this and just keep it for you for reference to refer back on when you have a teaching contract. So again, first point we talked about was, is the contract written in English and easy to understand? Do not sign a contract in a, that's in a language you don't understand, right? Usually teaching contracts, they will either be only in English or English and the other language of the country. And then you need to make sure if that, um, both versions are the same. Then the second point was, is the name of the school the same as the one you were told during interviews? And has it been spelled correctly? Is the logo the same? Is the location of the school the same? Or are they trying to send you to a different campus? All of these things, make sure. Third point was, is your name and passport number on the contract? And are they correct? Also your date of birth, your home address, all of these things, are they on the contract and are they correct this is important for your visa um, so that there are no delays and any problems the next point is is the salary the same as the promise to you in the interviews and is it written down correctly also overtime any overtime pay stated is very important the start date and the end date are they written down correctly and here it says please note these dates may not be the same as your arrival dates to China or wherever you go, um, because usually you're arriving a little bit earlier, right? You're arriving earlier before your actual start date. So you don't fly to a new country and then start teaching on that day, right? Usually there might be like a two week um, training or something. Uh, what's the word? I forget the word. Introduction, 
not introduction. Uh, anyway, like a two week training or whatever. And then you start something like this that might happen. And then also when your contract ends, you might not leave right away, right? Maybe you want to do some traveling or you just need to move out. You're not leaving on the day that your contract ends, right? So just make note of that. The next point would be go through your package details carefully. So your bonuses, your benefit package is everything with regards to the benefits written down the same as previously agreed upon. So that includes housing, medical insurance, any kind of bonuses, overtime pay as well, um, health insurance, all of those things. The next point was, are your work hours stipulated correctly? So what days do you work? What time of the day you work? Um, overtime pay, how many teaching hours a week or a month? Um, so all of those things you need to check. And then are the following details with regards to the contract stated? It needs to state how to terminate the contract early and the penalties for doing so. If you want to terminate early, how do you do that? And uh, yeah, what penalties come with it? How to extend the contract and any benefits for doing so that needs to be in there. And then also the offenses, which may lead to your dismissal and contract termination. So here you have it, your checklist of the things that you need to watch out for before you sign a teaching contract. I hope that everything makes sense um, and you feel a little bit better before taking on a new position. You feel more confident in this whole process. I hope this helped you a little bit. So again, feel free to screenshot this um, so that you can refer back to it or whatever you wanna do. Um, so yeah, this is it for today basically and uh before we go into q a i just want to say that uh this again was from ittt you can find us te at teflocourse.net and here on social media and we do have this 30 person off opportunity so you can go ahead and scan this qr code again to get 30 percent off your tefl or tsol course for today and you can also use our code i'm just going to the link excuse me the link i'm going to share again in the comment box here so you can also click on that and fill out the application and get a 30 percent discount so yeah <laughs> that is it all right let me have a look here leturk says nice contracts matter and we need to fully understand your contract yep i screenshot the checklist thank you for the tips so helpful yay thank you so much i really appreciate that um so yeah i mean it is very important um you know a lot of us we just especially young teachers just out of college me included no idea what's going on in a different country you just trust your employer you just sign it whatever but it's really important that you just take some time and Think about your contract, keep your in mind what you're entitled to throughout your employment um, so that it can be like, hey, actually, my contract says this, um, you know, what happened? Uh, why is it different now? Like, actually, my contract, I'm entitled to this. So what's going on? <laughs> you know. Fazan says, where is the hairband? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'll put it on next time. I felt like it didn't go with, I don't know. I actually forgot, it could have, yeah, it could have looked cute too. All right, I'll put it on next time. Nice to see you too, Fauzan. <laughs> All right, then we are officially officially in the Q&A part of this live. So I'm still here for a couple more minutes. If you have any additional questions, either about today's topic or about TEFL TESOL in general, teaching English abroad. Now is your time to ask me this question before I sign off. If you have any topic suggestions for upcoming live sessions, also feel free to put them on the table. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that is it. So whatever you feel like. Amitava says, thanks a lot, Linda, for your kind suggestion and support. 
You're welcome. Thank you so much for taking like an hour out of your evening or morning. I think it's morning, right? Morning, wherever you are, taking an hour of your time to spend it with me. I really, truly appreciate that. I'm so thankful for all the people who come back here, all the same people and the new people too who come back here every week. I really appreciate you guys. It's so much fun to see you and see our Tefl family grow. And we're building these connections and we make a really good network and everybody's kind of sharing what they're thinking. And um, it's just great. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. I'm always looking forward to Monday, uh, Friday morning when I do the live sessions. I'm like, oh, who will I see today? Um, because we've just grown to be this cute, Tefl family now. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, Fauzan, a detailed explanation about all the visa process with examples would be great, Linda. I think this is a little bit difficult to do because the visa process is different in all the countries. And also then for, it depends on your own nationality. So I think that's a little bit difficult to do. Um, so I'm not sure. I'll think about it because it's just different from country to country. So I don't know. Hmm. I'll, I'll think about it and see what I can do. Thank you, though. Juliana says, thank you for these essential materials today. The live session helps me review this information for the second time. It becomes much clearer than the first time I heard this information. Yeah, I was like, oh, is somebody going to notice? We talked about this before. But in my defense, we talked about this in July last year. So everybody, you see Juliana here. Juliana is pretty much here every week for over a year already. So, um. A very good student here. And I did update some information in the slides too, though. <laughs> but it's just hard coming up with new things every week. And I think we've we've um we have a lot of new viewers over the last couple of months. So I thought this is a very important topic. So I wanted to do it again and uh, a little bit with reviewed and new information. So um yeah, thanks, Juliana. Fazanzas, thanks for everything, Linda. Thanks for always being so helpful and easygoing. You're welcome. Thank you for always being here. You're so sweet. I appreciate that. <laughs> Me too, almost. Yes, you too. I know, Brett. Hello. I was wondering, oh, is Brett here today? Haven't seen any comments, but okay. Watching quietly from the corner. I see. <laughs> no, that's fun. I appreciate you guys. All right. Um, well, I'm just going to put it out there one more time. If anybody has one final question, now is your time to ask before I sign off and head into the weekend. So what are you guys doing this weekend? Maybe we can talk about that before I leave. <laughs> what are your plans? Juliana is probably going to stay inside since it's so cold. <laughs> I am going to check out more cherry blossom spots this weekend <laughs> before they're all gone. I think one more week maybe, and then they're all gone. Oh, physical therapy. What happened? Oh, you need to let me know what happened. Oh, no. I hope you're doing okay. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, then we are at the end. Um, maybe if somebody wants to take another screenshot here of the checklist, feel free to do so now before I turn this off. As always, you can, um, you know, watch the replay, watch this information again, um, and then, yeah. Even if you leave any comments, in the replay, um, we'll get back to you as well on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Hello, Maiden. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, Favazan is playing soccer and volleyball and fasting. Good. Back, lifting a heavy cabinet. Oh, no, Brett. Oh, I hope you feel better soon. <laughs> well, we're not getting any younger, right? 
<laughs> Me too. I have problems with my knees. I, I stopped going to ther physical therapy, so I need to go back there. I feel ya. I hope you're feeling better. I hope everybody took a good screenshot of this. And then I'll, I hope I'll see you all next week again. If you have any suggestions, like I said, for upcoming lives, I took note of what Fauzan suggested with the visa. So I'm going to look into that. But I think it's just going to be a little bit difficult because the process is just different everywhere. Um, but I'm going to see what I can do. So thank you for that suggestion. And then Juliana got freezing rain in a couple of minutes. Oh, gosh. Okay. Ooh, stay safe. Everybody out there, stay safe. Have a wonderful weekend. And thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate that. And Maiden says, I'm now enrolled in the 120-hour TEFL course with the additional young learner. Yay! Awesome! Congratulations. That's awesome. Congrats. I hope you're having fun. So I guess it's what you're going to do this weekend. You're going to study, take your course, work through a couple of units. That's a great plan. Thank you. Yes, I'll be back next week as well. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Yay, I love cherry blossoms as well. Happy weekend to everybody. And thank you so much again for spending some time of your day today with me. I really appreciate it. And then I'll see you all again next week, I hope. Until then, uh, yeah, bye. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye-bye.